Hi, it's Ben. In this video, I'm going to talk about environmental uh, toxins and allergens that can trigger eczema. There can be lots of substances in our environments that we encounter on a daily basis which can trigger an allergic reaction. And sometimes we're not allergic to, sometimes we don't realise that we're allergic to these substances. So I want to go through what those are with you so that you can take steps to uh, minimise your exposure or eliminate them from your environment and see if that has an impact. Um, it may be that none of them do have an impact on reducing the symptoms of your eczema, but you might be surprised by um, the, the reduction in symptoms that results from running through the checklist that I've put in the corresponding article to this video that I'll go through um, in this video. My personal experience is that once I took steps to eliminate or minimise my exposure to the things that I'm going to mention, I did experience a reduction in, in symptoms, particularly in respect of dust. And I think that it's important for many eczema sufferers to take every step that they can to minimise their exposure to things that are unnatural like chemicals or things that are potentially going to cause an allergic reaction because our immune systems are often hypersensitive. So every sort of small step can have an impact in reducing the symptoms and you know a hundred small steps <clears throat> may, can make a big difference. So a lot of the things I'm going to mention are considered safe for day-to-day -day use but actually can have an impact on eczema sufferers because of particular allergies, immune system problems and sensitivity. The first thing I want to talk about is water. Studies show that in, in most Western countries, the tap water is safe to drink. However, it does, a lot of drinking water, tap water, does contain some chemicals which can have an impact on eczema sufferers because of our hypersensitive immune systems. So our bodies are made mostly of water and it takes up most of the space in every cell. So to improve your health, it can often help to drink as good a quality water as possible. Now, the average city tap water in the West, in Europe or the US, does contain traces of over 500 chemicals, according to some studies, including chlorine and also fluoride, which is a controversial subject. And some of us can benefit by changing the water that we drink from tap water to naturally occurring spring water. Um, so bottled water, ideally from glass bottles, I know that's expensive, but plastic bottles are generally better. And also um, filtering our tap water, so getting a good quality filter can have an impact on eczema and reduce the symptoms. And some people significantly, and I certainly noticed the difference, and I also noticed that after changing my, the water I drink to uh, bottled Highland spring water from tap water, the, my taste for water changed within a week or two and I could really taste the difference between tap water and bottled spring water. So I'd recommend that you look into that. Um, the best sort of water that you want is slightly alkaline on the pH scale and with it, the minerals intact, so you want to be getting uh, lots of minerals from your water. Uh, distilling tap water can be useful, although that does remove some of the minerals, but it's probably better um, health-wise than drinking tap water. Now I'm not saying that tap water is necessarily unhealthy, but it can trigger allergic reactions due to some of the chemicals in it for eczema sufferers. Um, soft and hard water can have an, an impact as well and eczema sufferers often benefit from drinking soft water rather than hard water. <coughs> so have a, have a look into that. Skin creams, secondly. I think most of the skin creams that we're prescribed with for eczema are petroleum based 
and contain a lot of chemicals including preservatives to increase their shelf life. Uh, as well as that there are sunscreens which we use which can contain substances like um, some fragrances, alcohol, lanolin, um, parabens, isopropyl, uh, glyco and propylene glycol and also formaldehyde. Some of us are actually allergic to them, so although the moisturising effect can be beneficial, that can be counteracted by an allergic reaction. So, you, will, you know, it's important to make sure that you try different skin creams and, and see the impact on and see, you know, which actually has, firstly, the greatest impact in moisturising the skin, but secondly, doesn't cause an allergic reaction. As well as that, the skin is semi-permeable, so if you put petroleum-based creams on your skin, and they include a lot of the chemicals I just mentioned, some of it will be absorbed into your body. Now, as eczema sufferers are often hypersensitive and our immune systems are overburdened, I think it's sensible to try to reduce our exposure to chemicals whether they're in our environment or absorbed through the skin, um, in order to <clears throat> put as little a burden on our bodies in terms of elimination as we can. Now, I don't have any, there's no scientific research to show that how much of the chemicals are absorbed into the skin and whether or not they have an impact on eczema. This is just something that I'm recommending because it's not illogical and, and might help. So. I recommend that instead of using a chemical sort of petroleum-based cream, um, you use something like a natural moisturizer. So a good one is coconut oil, or other another plant oil, magnesium oil, or an oatmeal soak. And there are natural moisturizers which are thicker than the ones I've just mentioned, but contain only natural ingredients. Um, I'd recommend having a look into them. And those creams tend not to block your pores as much, and block pores can exacerbate eczema. The studies that, I'm, that I refer to in this article will be included in the, sorry, in this video will be included in the article that is linked below this video. So a big, another big one, allergen for eczema is dust. Uh, dust mite antigens are a common cause of um, allergic reaction, but particularly in eczema sufferers, they can trigger uh, an eczema outbreak. So logically, reducing the levels of dust in your home can reduce the symptoms of your eczema if you have an allergic allergy to dust. So cleaning your home regularly, doing things like hoovering at least once a week, changing your bed sheets each week, hoovering the curtains, um, changing the carpets to, uh, to a, a wooden floor or something which is much easier to clean and doesn't collect dust. Um, ventilating the home well, so leaving windows open when you can. All of those things can reduce the amount of itching that you, um, that you undergo at home. The mites, uh, the, the allergens are mostly on the mites exoskeletons but are also in their droppings so basically they leave um, potential allergens everywhere and other um, similar sort of natural triggers of eczema include animal dander so you could have an animal allergy like to cats and dogs. Um, to pollens like a hay fever that also causes eczema or to mould. So you want to check, you know, through elimination and see if not exposing yourself to a pet improves your symptoms. Um, see if there's any damp or mould in your house and try to get rid of it or avoid it and see if that has an impact. And also there might be a tree or something that grows close to your home that triggers your eczema, and it, you know, similar to hay fever. So you know, have a think about what those could be and try avoiding them and see if that has an impact on your symptoms. Um, I already mentioned some chemicals in skin creams, but there are a lot of other chemicals which we use 
um, often on a day-to-day -day basis, which can aggravate eczema. So things like shampoos and cleaning products and other hygiene products can irritate us and cause uh, an allergic reaction. And these are often these chemicals are often the cause of eczema, which isn't um, eczema, which is contact eczema, rather than eczema, which comes from an allergic reaction. So contact eczema being uh, skin irritation, which is caused by repeated exposure to a particular irritant. And there's a lot more in my free ebook about this subject, but I'm just going to run through some of the substances which can contain chemicals and can aggravate eczema. I'm not saying that they definitely will, but it's worth looking into and trying to avoid or replace so that you basically have a more natural environment with less potential um, toxins or allergens. So, firstly, uh, makeup. Uh, Makeup for women can contain chemicals and you can get more natural products or use less. Um, you can replace shampoos, conditioners, soaps with just natural soaps. Um, for example, an olive oil soap is pretty good or natural um, shampoos and no chemicals. For shaving foam, you can use aloe vera gel instead. Um, toothpaste, some people have a sensitivity to the chemicals in some toothpaste. Um, so. You can try using a natural base toothpaste for a while. Um, they're available in most health stores or online. Amalgam fillings. There have been some in independent studies that show that metal amalgam fillings, um, which contain some mercury, can actually have an impact on the body and that the, the mercury is stored in the tissues. And I mentioned in a previous video that one symptom of heavy metal poisoning can be eczema. Now, I'm not saying that that's necessarily the case with you, but it's something to be wary of. So if you've got the option, I'd recommend, you know, why, why take the risk? And why take the risk of having a, a metal tooth filling? Uh, use a composite filling. I personally had all of my metal um, fillings taken out and replaced. And if that's an option to you, it's something that you might want to look into. Um, there haven't been any specific studies on the uh, on methyl amalgam fillings and the incidence of eczema specifically, but anecdotally there seem to be quite a few people online who claim to have a reduction in the symptoms when they um, have their metal tooth fillings removed. So that's something that you can look into. Um, hair gel sprays and dyes, you can replace those uh, deodorants, air fresheners, perfumes. Uh, you can repla replace all of those with substances which are have a natural base. Um, in terms of deodorant, you could just wash more um, and not use as much deodorant. Washing powder. Some eczema sufferers are sensitive to biological uh, washing powder. So you can use um, a non-biological washing powder or, or at least try, try a different brand of washing powder. And pesticides on foods can cause a reaction. So make sure that you wash all your fruit and vegetables properly, or if you can, get organic. Some clothing can trigger eczema. So um, things like wool and synthetic fibres uh, often don't often uh, don't ventilate as well as fibres like cotton, and also clothing that's restrictive can um, exacerbate eczema. Um, it seems to be that when eczema sufferers are in a warmer environment where they can wear less clothing, you know, shorts and t-shirts and that sort of thing, then because their skin is kind of directly exposed to the air, their symptoms reduce. So you want to try and look into um, using cotton fibres or wearing cotton fibres and also wear clothing that's loose and not restrictive if possible. And then um, pollution, there have been some studies that show that eczema um, can be triggered by uh, pollution and that children in cities, often closer to pollution, often have worse symptoms of eczema than those outside of cities. I'll go, to that, uh, I'll go through that study in another video, but um, it does appear uh, more, which will be more to do with lifestyle. 
but it does appear that that can have an impact. So, I mean, if you're making any long-term plans, it might be sensible for you to look to moving to a more natural environment somewhere outside of the city where you're not exposed to a lot of um, pollution on a day-to-day -day basis. And finally, radiation. I think this is a fairly new topic and there do seem to be a number of um, some research, there is some research coming out now which is showing that radiation, even mild forms of radiation like um, Wi-Fi internet or using mobile phones can have an impact on our health. Now I'm not making a direct connection between that and eczema because there aren't any scientific studies that I'm aware of that show it. But I think, you know, just in terms of general health, it might be something that you should become aware of and just take steps to reduce the amount of electronic um, noise or, what, uh, or radiation in your home uh, by doing things like just turning your phone off at night, turning the wireless router off at night, um, turning things off with a plug socket. I don't know if that will have an impact at all, um, but, you know, it's worth a try and it can't cause any harm. So that's a summary. In the next video, I'll go more into lifestyle and certain activities and things like location that can improve the symptoms of eczema and also improve your health and decrease inflammation in the body. So if you've got any questions, let me know. If there's anything I've missed out, I'd be really pleased to hear from you. And let me know if there's anything that has um, that you've removed from your environment or that you've encountered that triggered your eczema or that um, resulted in a reduction in your symptoms when it was removed. Okay, thanks for watching.